Hello, I'm Lucy, this is Scott, we're from Book Acts. this is episode 5 of our Week in Books and our Non-Fiction November TVRs. Yay! Yay! So, we are back with the Week in Books, our weekly video in which we talk about our favourite bookish news of the week. And absolutely anything from the previous weeks. You it go could off go on any tangent here, there, anywhere. everywhere. Just, yeah. It could Who go knows? anywhere. And then we stick our TBRs on the end. And this week, I feel like it's really only right to defer to Scott for the biggest bookish news of the week. What is it, Scott? What could it possibly um, be? I'm guessing it may be the booker and the fact that I managed to actually somehow fluke the winner for the second book prize in a row. Which there you go. I'm trying not to be too smug because it could just be complete beginner's luck. But... That is a total and utter lie, folks. Um, Scott has been unbearably smug all week. And I would just... say, look, look, at, look at the link below to about minute 10 of the video we've linked to. I think it's the first book chat. Yeah. All right, okay. For anyone who needs a little bit of catch up on what's going on here, the Booker Prize announced its winner this week and shock horror, Scott managed to pick it. Um, he also managed to pick the Women's Prize. So, two for two, he is really, <laughs> really, really smug folks. And I have to tell you, um, we watched the announcement live on the telly and I was like, Scott, we picked it, we picked it. And he was like, Excuse me, who picked it? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, fair yes. play. I can't take anything. Um, but, you know, fair play to Anna Burns. Um, she did a very good job, didn't she? It was, yeah. And, yeah, it's, it's actually been interesting watching the feedback of, there's been quite a detailed analysis in the build-up of books that, obviously, I've read. You know, you normally watch these things yeah. and stuff, but I've never really paid attention before. We've been hooked this year. Hooked! <laughs> I, I won't go as far as saying hooked. I've been hooked. But, but some of the stuff I just didn't, I, I actually, the more, more I've watched it, the more I think that some of these journalists and some of you on TV just haven't even read the book. Because for me, I, I don't like hard to read books and everyone was saying The Milkman's a hard to read book and I'm like... People kept saying it. The Channel 4 News said every, it. Everyone was and I'm like... Oh, pundit. Sorry, just picking on Channel 4. I can't remember the other ones. But I was like... Of the shortlist, it was definitely. Like, The Long Take was the hardest to read book. And for me, like, I got quite a... Easy reading. Low threshold for hard to read, do you know? <laughs> yeah, it, it made you think and it's quite rambly, but it's not really, it wasn't hard to read. It wasn't using hard, hard words or really challenging grammar in any way, shape or form. Um, so and actually we saw, and, oh, well I've seen Anna Burns interviewed loads and loads this week actually, and she kept saying as well that she was surprised that people were calling it a hard to read book um, because she didn't feel that that was what she was trying to write. So I think um, for anyone out there, who's been thinking of picking up Milkman and then kept seeing everyone saying, it's such a hard read. Um, you know, don't be put well, off. It's just, when they're saying hard read, I saw people saying, oh, you change people's from, names from John to somebody smook somebody. Or something. I'm like, it doesn't make it hard to read. <laughs> sure. no, Substituting names with nicknames is not it, really... Um, um, what was it like in two? A girl, the girl is a half form thing, and which you also rubbish. tried to read, yeah, and you were like, rubbish. oh, that really was hard to read. So, yeah. anyway, we're going off on a bit of a tangent. Already, I already um, would, but... Scott was really, really smug, but pat on the back to him. Um, we hope that you are happy with and that all, all choice. And all I would say with both the books I managed to pick, it's always been about what novel is right for the moment in time. Yeah. And I, I just guess what the judge, not necessarily the book that I enjoyed the most, I think I actually said I enjoyed Miles Runs the best, but... But you did like Milkman. Yeah, 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 yeah. That what I said wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have thought, but it's more the fact that, especially here in the UK, Northern Ireland's coming up more and more because of the Brexit negotiations. So I thought, one, that's timely. And then the whole, I think the whole Me Too movement and stuff like that, it's it just a very timely book, well, well put is. together. And it and it sort of well yeah it was a bit deeper than some of the other books and I think when I was reviewing the early um, the long list there were some of the books there, I was like there's there is no political po point to this book so stuff like Washington Black which people were saying is going to I'm like there's not really hasn't really pushed the boundaries politically it's which, slavery is bad yeah we know that but it, it didn't even really push that as hard as it could have done so it's sort of like the the earlier books I read there wasn't really that if there was political Substance. undertones it was a lot more subtle whereas yeah, the milkman, yeah, For something like the Booker as well, you expect there yeah. to be like pushing the boundaries mm -hmm. in terms of themes and things mm -hmm. like that as well, don't you? Um, but I'm not going to get smoggy. It clearly is beginner's luck. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> right, folks, I'm going to make him read the Costa. Like all five short lists, cover to cover. Yeah. Um, and then we'll see if he makes it. Three for three. Um, hands up everybody who wants to see Scott pick no. number three. 
I do. Costa's got some children's books on it, though, right? Yeah, you can read those quickly. Before we move on from the book out, I just want to raise a couple of things. Actually, I'll do the really cool one first. So cool. Um. Well, yeah. No, it's cool. I, I don't even it's know cool. what you're about to say. <laughs> um. Well, you can't. You will. You will when I start. Right. I don't so, know how you define cool, but um, this <laughs> is. I don't ever think the book cool. has been defined as cool. But. This is cool in my world. Right. Oh, now I feel so silly. So I reckon this was probably 36 hours after the Booker Prize was announced. So it was announced on Tuesday evening. Mm -hmm. I reckon this was probably Thursday morning. I got a piece of post, folks. Um, here's the envelope. I've taken it out. Can you see that? Royal Mail made a little stamp and it says, congratulations to Anna Burns, winner of the 2018 Man Booker Prize. And I'm now feeling really uncool. But I was so excited at how fast, and the fact they bothered to do it in the first I'm place. I'm more amazed that people still use stamps. Royal Mail. <laughs> Royal Mail, someone at Royal Mail watches the booker. Anyway, um, now I feel like a total not cool person. I'm going to tell you something that, about the booker which surprised me. Because, and I've already told you this unfortunately, so yeah. you know, it's not going to be a surprise. But, um, on the day of the announcement, earlier on in the day, I read an article in the paper about, um, well actually, it was saying that Daisy Johnson had become the bookie's favourite and, you know, they were saying that she was probably going to win, um, which I doubted. Which is a sign always that, that someone's that not going to win. she's not going to win. Sorry, Daisy Johnson. <laughs> but it had in, um, in that article the number of books that each of the shortlisted books had sold up until the day of the announcement. And I was absolutely flabbergasted at how many it was or how few mm -hmm. it was. And I said to you, the, the biggest selling, which was Everything Under, how many do you think it had sold, Scott? And Scott uh, went, 30,000. Yeah, yeah, no, I did, I did guess, ter I, I know now, so it's not really a And it really was, guess, but... it was not 30,000, it was 5,200 it... copies. Yeah. That is such a small amount. And it was followed by Milkman. Yeah, um, and then that one. Washington Black and the other ones. And then the lowest um, selling one was The Long Take, and let me just check, it was 2,500 copies up until the day of the announcement yeah. and Milkman the next day was top of the bestsellers list of course of course um you know fair enough but I was just I don't know and anyone else out there completely is that just the UK? But, but it's always surprised me about especially, how few that picks especially like hardback fiction I think if you sold like 2,000 in a week they would put you definitely in the top 10 bestsellers so so like everyone you see it? especially in the UK anyone you see with like Times bestseller it means they've just managed to coordinate 2,000 people buying the book in the yeah. same week. Which actually, you know, still fairly. Yeah, like 2,000 people. 2, 000, is still it's 2,000 people. people more than ever will buy my book. But um, but I think you have in this mind, in your mind, don't you, a picture of you know how many books would sell if you got oh. you know it's the booker people. The, the scary actually, thing is the authors will make on a hardback. What do low. authors make about a pound? So mm. like from being on the shortlist. <laughs> Daisy Johnson's made five thousand pound. You think sort of like the images that plus two and a half thousand pounds that she got okay. as prize money. But okay. you know, still, it's not mega bucks, folks. Anyway. So yeah, so, so you go. won the lottery, but you really, really probably would rather actually win the lottery. But you know, you have set yourself up to build a long, sustainable mm -hmm. career in books. So you know, swings and roundabouts, folks. Swings yeah. and roundabouts. And that is the last we're ever going to talk about the booker ever ever, ever, unless Fine. Scott has to remind us that he picked it, which no. will probably be quite regular, because it has been this week in our house, um, you know, or next year, can't wait. <laughs> um, so, to the other book news of this week, there's only two little things that I want to talk I about. I don't know these. So well, I'm, there's no games, we've got no games to play, oh, I'm sorry. Um, actually, the other one is about a prize, and this um, piece of news was very kindly sent to me by um, Gina. Hello Gina, who watches our channel and found it and thought it was really good. And it is, it's a lovely, lovely story. And it is a story about, I have to check her name because I've forgotten. Katrona Lally. I'm really hoping I've said that. Now she won. Should the, I know who she is? She won the Rooney Prize for Irish Literature, um, which is for sort of emerging writers. And it's mm -hmm. hosted by Trinity College Dublin. Um, and... Uh, she won this prize for her fabulous, fabulous writing, and it then transpired that actually she worked at Trinity College. Oh, really? And, and paid the judges? And, <laughs> um, probably not. She worked at Trinity College, probably not paying the judges, because she was in fact a cleaner there. Oh, and, really? Wow. Yeah, she was. And um, she submitted this prize, and she knocked it out of the park, and she smashed it, and she won, and well done yeah. to her. So and, that and just shows something about me being so cynical. That yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Scott manages to ruin a lovely feel-good story by being a grumpy old man. Very cynical. So that was um, that was a nice story. And if um, anybody else has really great stories that they come across that we have missed, then please do share them with us because um, I was really happy to get that message. It yeah. made me smile. Um, and the last bit of book news that I wanted to share is about a really, 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 really old book. It is about a book that is 1,302 years old and it is one of the oldest intact surviving books in the whole world ever, ever, ever. Um, and it's a Bible. Okay. Um, and it was given by some British monks that, that made it. <laughs> <laughs> to the Pope all those years ago yeah. and it is now coming on a journey back to Britain um, to be displayed at the British Museum and you know whether you're religious or not that is a really cool age for a book and I've seen a picture of it it's like a foot thick it weighs 34 kilograms mm -hmm. and it has 2,000 pages and the whole bleeding thing had to be 34 written. kilograms? What's yeah. made out of that? Um, I think it was cast. That's properly skin. heavy. I think it was skin it was made out of it's like literally a foot right. old and it's that's one probably of, like a kilo well it's like 34, 34 of these yeah, yeah. Like, okay well you know i doubt that's even a kilo wow Scott, it was 1302 years ago they didn't have a press they yeah. had to make it out of calf skin With gold like proper yeah. i don't think it has gold on it um but you know there you go i just thought that that was a really cool Bit of news. I'm going to stop calling book news cool because you just—I can see the eye roll in the corner of my eye. Anyway, should we move on to our TBRs? Should we move on to them? Yeah. Right. Oh, exciting so, ones this month. Yeah. What we're reading this week is still the same as last week because oh, I finished one of them. But... Did you finish one of them? Did you? I was—I'm reading *Bridge of Clay* by Marcus Zusak and um, Nine Perfect Strangers* by Leanne Moriarty. And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to get through both of these this week, and I got through neither of them. I started both of them. I don't know why, but I didn't get to the end. Um, you, I finished you, Fifth Risk. Oh, but, you finished Fifth Risk. But it was about 180 pages. And <laughs> it's, only, it's only about that big. So, you know, clap, clap. Um, but, so instead, because we can't tell you about those books, it's a bit pointless, we're going to talk about non-fiction November because um, it's fun. We're going to join in, aren't we? Yeah, I, and I really, I really enjoyed it last year. So yeah, last you year did was, it. I did yeah, it. was you? the first year I did it. And, um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. So I thought... it. it I, it's actually quite challenging to pick the books, I'm sure we'll come into it in a minute. Yeah, it's, so, it's harder than you... It's harder than you... Well, actually... Last year I probably found it easier, this year... Oh, yeah. I don't know. So, um, it's run by Olive over at A Book Olive, mm. and um, the principle is in November you read a little bit more non-fiction than you would ordinarily read. So if you read no non-fiction, read one book of non-fiction. If you read loads, read a bit more. Um, and she gives you some themes to work about, I've written them down actually. So, you don't have to join in with the themes, but you know, you can if you go. I, I like work. the themes. I, like, I was... Do you want to read them out? You can, can go you on read then. my so, so, the way it is, is like you have to pick a book for one of these two words. It actually had two words this time. Last year it only had one, but to start with, it's past time or past time. Yeah. Wonder. I'm nodding, like, yes, you got it right. Well wonder done. or wonder. Shelf or self. And micro or macro. So. so the idea is to pick books along those themes and read them in November. So this, folks, is our non-fiction November TBR. You go first. Okay, so what did we start with? What's the first one? Oh, do I have to tell them again? Um, uh, past time. Was past it? time or past time. Okay, so this was a straight interesting one for me because... I'd just like to say, a minute ago, Scott called me uncalled for thinking that Royal Mail stamping the booker... Um, on a letter was was a cool thing. Wait till you hear what his pastime is, folks. <laughs> Wait till you hear what he's picked for pastime. Quite okay, good. so so yeah. I, 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 it's not cool, or in my eyes it is, but I know I'm not oh, cool. Oh, we're such geeks, we are such geeks. <laughs> um, so, so the book is Every, Everybody Lies <laughs> by, by Seth Stevens David, Daviswitz. Um, and in terms of pastime, so, I, it's sort of a bit of a hobby now, but in the past I also studied a lot around behavioural economics and it's just something I really enjoy about how people don't act rationally and when... when... Scott likes to know <laughs> how everyone's evil little minds work so that then you can yeah. uh, get to the dark side. Oh, it helps you pick pick judge prizes. Uh, um, but, but, um, but yeah, but no, it's, it's, it's something I find very, very interesting. How, how humans really think, not how they're supposed to think. So, Scott's super cool lies. pastime book. 
Yeah. So, so, so I believe this is all about look at big data and how, how really how you could probably tell more about. And I haven't read it, so just just guessing what's going to say. But how search engines and stuff actually know what you truly think, whereas what you put and tell pollsters is complete lies. Because I actually find it interesting. Every election I've re watched recently, all the pollsters are going. Yeah. It's going this way, going this way, and then probably for the last five. You know? Way over there. So right? everyone clearly just lies to the pollsters on the way out, and I would I if ever I came out of an election. Yeah, there's why, someone there going. Why would you tell them? Which way did you vote? I'd probably deliberately tell them the wrong way. I just smile sweetly. <laughs> not because okay. I'm like. Secret ballot. Yeah. No. No. And not because I'm like ashamed of my views. It's more just because I want to screw over the pollsters. Yeah. <laughs> just because it's entertaining. Beggars, yeah. Aren't they? So. So that, right. that's everything nice. Past so, time. Past um, time. What did you do for wonder or wonder? I went for wonder. Um, oh, yeah. So I wanted a nice adventure journey of a, of a trip. So And also it ties into one of our early book chats. So yeah. I've got South, The Endurance Expedition by Ernest Shackleton. So Because in our one of our book chats, were you just about to say the story? Sorry, yes. I hijacked it. Go ahead. Now you can go, oh. I believe the book that they actually produced, or one of Ernest Shackleton's books that was produced and actually published in Antarctica, was found 38 years later and sold for lots of money, I believe. Is that right? Yes, I think it was. $95,000 at auction it went for. This yeah. one. This one, by the sounds of it, and again, I haven't read any of these, so I can't really give you a full synopsis. This is an adventure in 1914 where a team of 26 people set off to, to walk to the South Pole. And I believe it all goes tragically wrong. And the don't bottom laugh. line, don't no, laugh. no, don't, I shouldn't laugh because the the, the the quote on the back says one of the most harrowing survival stories of all time. So brilliant! But look at the size of that dog. Look at the size of that dog. Yeah. Um, so it can't be all bad, you know. They have dogs. Yeah. Um, self or shelf. Self or shelf. So I gone shelf, and so so what I took that to mean was to pick a book off our shelf, and so I've gone for one that I've had. For a while, so I looked at what we've got on the shelf that I haven't read. So I went for Ghost in the Wires, My Adventures as a World's Most Wanted Hacker. So this is around someone called Kevin Mitnick. I believe it's a autobiography. I'm trying really hard not to call you cool again. Yeah, I am so cool. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hackers. Yeah. But no, again, very topical. Something got a semi-interest in. And yeah, I just want to finish this book because I've been, it's been staring at me for a long time. And I just want to finish it. And the last one was micro macro. Yep, and just to to round off my my coolness, I've gone for macro. This one does look quite cool. I yeah, like so I've gone for macro, and for me, I, I wanted to know something big, global, um, global politics, geopolitics at a macro level. That's the way I took it. So I've gone for <laughs> Silk Roads by Peter Frankopan, and I believe it's a macroeconomic view of the growth of Asia and the old Silk Road in modern times. So. The Silk Road. That's well so gone there for. you go. There you go. So that is Scott's non-fiction November TBR. Would you like to know what I'm reading? Go on then. Okay, I'm going to tell you about the theme, the general theme first, and um, because I might possibly be cheating. Have, <laughs> I was going to say, um, gently manipulated okay. the themes, um, crowbarred the themes into. Um, you know, basically the books that I wanted to read. Um, which is fine, because actually I can make it work. Because shelf, yeah, I'm gonna steal your theory. Some <laughs> of them were already on my shelf, folks. Yeah. Um, pastime, they all relate to my pastime. Every single one of them, five little ticks. Um, they're also about creating a sense of wonder for people, yeah, bear with me. Um, and some of them relate to micro things, and some of them relate to macro things. So I'm giving myself a tick. What would you have done if the around. words were something completely different? Like I'd have found a different way ice. to crowbar them. Fire. Um, you know, lighting a fire <laughs> in people. They don't even know what I'm talking about, right? Right. Okay. Basically, all of this happened because um, Stroyan and Igori, NaNoWriMo last year was our worst performing video of all time. So you've just tried so to. I'm not like... allowed to do NaNoWriMo <laughs> this year because Scott was like, nobody cares. You see, nobody cares. Just... Um, Hello, um, my name's Lucy and I'm also an author for anyone out there that doesn't know. Everyone else has just dropped off now, that's it. Yeah. Um, I promise I'm not doing NaNoWriMo, please don't unsubscribe. Um, and I'm not going to talk about it all month either. But I am going to read some non-fiction um, books about writing. Because um, I feel like, you know, I've just started my third novel. I need to brush up a little. I've just restarted my third <laughs> novel. <laughs> this novel that's been wrote, being written for about three years. So. I wrote one and it was rubbish, so I started again. Um, <laughs> so I wrote one and it was rubbish. Um, so I thought I'd better read some books as I'm just starting it again to make it not rubbish. Right, I'm going to stop talking about me and tell you what I'm reading. Um, and then at the end of Nonfiction November, I'll do just, just do a little wrap 
with them all together. So don't worry, people who don't care, I'm not going to spam you. Um, the first one I'm going to read um, is a new one, not off my shelf. It's Steering the Craft by Ursula Le Guin. I don't know how to say her name, but she's a very famous author um, who has written a whole load of fabulous fantasy books. And this book is Macro. No, yeah. oh no, it's not. It's oh Micro. Dear. Oh it's dear. Micro. I always get those two muddled up. Um, yeah. I'm a writer. Micro, um, micro, micro. Yeah, so it's like. It's got chapters called things like Teaching verbs grammar and, like and adjectives and adverbs. Let's put full stops. Yeah, so it's getting into the real technical nitty gritty of how to make sentences. Um, and I think it looks fascinating. Haven't read that one before. It's only a tiddler. That's what I'm going to read first. Um, Stephen King's On Writing. I love Stephen King. I love writing. Never read On Writing by Stephen King. It's part memoir um, and part tips for people who want to write better, I believe. Um, so I'm really looking forward yep. to reading that. If you that. read that book, it doesn't mean you're going to sell as many copies. Oh, wouldn't that be the dream? That would be lovely. Um, I suspect not, because I imagine lots of other people have read it too who have not sold as many books as him. Um, this one is one that's already on my shelf. Um, it's Plotting and Writing Suspense Fiction by Patricia Highsmith. Um, I like love Patricia one? Highsmith. Um, yeah, we can call it my macro one, sure. <laughs> Actually, yeah, no, it works for that because it's kind of, it is about big picture writing stuff. I, I love Patricia Highsmith so very much. And I've read this book quite a few times already, but not for a few years, and I love it um, because it's got that same like dry, hu dark <laughs> humour going through it. Um, and it's totally macro. So <laughs> I'm gonna read that one. Um, the Creative Writing Course Book. Um, which is edited by Julia Bell and Paul Maggers. And this is, um, I don't know if it's micro or macro, I was trying to crowbar it in on the hop, but I don't know. It's basically a set of, um, it's divided into chapters, each about Most a specific, <laughs> around a specific area of writing. So, um, you know, plot or character or point of view. Okay. And then it has collections within that chapter of like mini chapters, which are all either sort of, exercises set by a, mm -hmm. by a established writer or sort of like an opinion piece on an established writer about that particular thing um and this was on my shelf as well i dipped in and out of it at various times when i'm stuck on particular things i'm gonna go back i'm gonna have a refresh why are you laughing at me why because no one's watching anymore sorry <laughs> it's the last it's the last book folks it's the last book writing the breakout novel by donald Mass. No relation to Sarah J, um, I believe. It's spelled different anyway. It is spelled different, yeah. subtly different, so that they know, people know she's not related. He is a um, big time New York literary agent, um, and I believe he's also a writer as well. He writes under a pseudonym and he's got like loads of novels, but nobody knows who they are. Um, and um, this book, I believe, looks at what has made, um, or sort of common traits of lots of really successful books. Um, across a whole different load of genres to basically, you know, tell you what to do. Give me the golden yeah. nugget, yeah. golden goose, there you go. the golden key to this book's going to be amazing a really now. Great really? novel. It's better be better than the last book three I wrote. God, that was a waste of time, wasn't it? Um, so that <laughs> is my non-fiction November, um, or our non-fiction November. Yeah. If you're taking part in non-fiction November, um, please do let us know what you're reading. If you're taking part in NaNoWriMo. Um, you're allowed to talk to me about it too. I just won't tell Scott. It's fine. Oh, I have no issues with it. I was just amazed last year that it truly is our worst performing video it of all was, time. yeah. Like three people watched it and they were like, this sucks. <laughs> I was like, sorry, I will never talk about writing again. I'll never talk about writing again. Um, except in that rap video. Then I probably will. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that was a week in books. Anything else? No, do that's just, it from Do you me. want to remind them all that you picked the book a winner? No, I think they've probably, like got, they've probably got the message by now. They're still minutes, here. They've yeah. probably heard me. <laughs> this is a really long video, folks. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, please do talk to us in the comments below with all your fabulous news stories and, um, I nearly said NaNoWriMo, <laughs> non-fiction <laughs> November picks. And um, we'll see you next video. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.